This number is terrifying. Can you read that? It's 14,591 and yes, that is the amount of credit card debt I'm in. <laughs> but we're not gonna let that be overwhelming right now. We're going to sit down and look at my 2024 financial goals, do a little bit of reflecting on the past year and look forward to a new year and paying off some at least some of that credit card debt. Hello, my name is Elizabeth and welcome to That Liz Hunter. It's my channel where I talk all things lifestyle, a bit of culty survival stories because I grew up in a cult, as well as some of my favorite books, favorite Florida things, and trips around the world. If you're watching, thanks for being here. I hope you enjoy this video and please be super kind in the comments because talking about money is not easy. Talking about how much debt one is in is never easy and it can be a little bit overwhelming and sometimes the comments can be negative. So if you have advice for how I should save money or spend money, that's not necessarily what I'm looking for in this video. So you don't have to drop those kind of comments. One time I posted a video like this and someone told me to get rid of my dog. So that is not the kind of comment I'm looking for here. Let's talk 2024 and resetting financially and my financial goals for this next year. When it comes to setting financial goals and all sorts of goals, I use a Notion template that helps me divide my goals by quarter. I plan to post monthly and quarterly updates on all of these goals and I'm excited to share them, but let's start by talking about my word of the year because it directly impacts my financial goals. My word for 2024 is intention. This is the definition I've written for myself for this word. Intention, to choose my habits, friendships, spending, and feelings that will ground me and offer me space for connection, stability, and growth. Connection, stability, and growth. Those are three ways that I am looking forward to channeling my energy in 2024. And I want to be intentional because I'm entering my 30s, which is a little bit overwhelming. And while I'm excited to enter my 30s, I don't want it to be a decade of frustration and stress because of finances, because of lack of relationships, and because of career instability. Instead, I want to focus on building a decade and a season of life for me that will allow me to pursue my passions, my dreams, and allow me to be happy at what I'm doing with my life because I don't want to be at the end of my 30s and still in a lot ton of credit card debt or floundering to figure out what my purpose is. That sounds so... I don't know if that's therapy speak or really scary to talk about but you're entering your 30s is very serious and I've been thinking about this for like six or seven months and I started to take some steps in August to really look ahead at my 30s because I started to realize number one, how much debt I actually am in and how that was going to basically incapacitate me when it came to starting a family because I don't think I want to have children when I am thousands and thousands of dollars in debt because then that is going to impact uh, what the way I can, the opportunities I can give my kids. And as a 29 year old staring down 30, I know in my head if I'm going to have kids when I would like to have them and I need to be financially whole by that time period in my life or at least have a very feasible bite taken out of the mountain that is my financial instability right now. Before I talk about the debt that I want to pay off, I want to talk about my overall financial health and some big goals I have for that. So number one is I want to save at least $500 in my high yield savings account. I am ending the year 2023 by saving the last three months. I saved around $25 per month in my high yield savings account, which is the first time I've ever actually saved money in a high yield savings account two months in a row without withdrawing it. And that was a big challenge for me personally. And I'm very, 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 very excited that I did that. I am so excited that I did that. I know it's a very small step, but felt really big for me. And so I, I want to continue to do that. I would like to increase it to $50 a month. I started at $25, seeing if I could know, if I would notice that I was missing $25 out of my like spending budget. Didn't notice, it was great. And I want to go into January and start saving $25 per paycheck in 2024, which is around $50 a month. And I'm very excited that this is just, this feels very feasible and I should have this goal met by the end of 2024. 
it's a it's a step by step thing. If I save this money, then I will have five hundred dollars at the in the in my high yield savings account by the end of twenty twenty four, and that is exciting news. My second goal is an automated goal. It is not something I have to even think about. And it's not something that I need to even check because it's going to happen. And that is to save 2% of my income in my 401k. I have not been saving money in my 401k. My company matches what money you put into it, but I didn't start putting money in until October. And starting with my very first paycheck in November, I sold, I automated it and put 2% in my 401k. Now, earlier this week, as I was thinking about my 401k, I Googled how much money I'm supposed to have in my 401k by age 30. I do not have that much money in my 401k, so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm fairly behind, but I'm not going to get overwhelmed by this because the good news is my company made an announcement at the end of the year that they will be, not only will they continue to match the 2% that I put in my 401k, but they are going to put 8% from our company that's not out of my salary, it's 8% of my salary they're going to put in my 401k. If I continue to put the 2% in and my company matches that plus the 8%, then I will save 10% total income, about 10% of my income beyond my current income. It's not like 10% of it, but 10 plus 10, um, an amount that equals 10% of my income will be in my 401k by the end of 2024, which is incredible and it, it meets the financial goal that I need to have to how how much money I want to save in my 401k by the end of my 30s because I have a number amount that I need in my mind to have in my 401k by age 40 and if I continue to take the steps the 2% plus my company matching it plus the 8% that they will they've pledged to put in it then I will hit that number by age 40. Does that mean I will continue to work at this job till age 40? I'm not sure but as long as I continue to work there for the next two years, which is what I'm contracted to do, then when I'm ready to move on or make a career change or decide to stay or not, I will know what kind of money that I need to earn to put in my 401k to meet this financial goal by age 40 because my I was not taught anything about retirement and I'm just now starting to educate myself on it and that is the number one step I have, like something that's very important to me is to make sure that my 401k, that I'm not borrowing from it and that I'm putting the money in now before I think about retirement in 20 years and I'm overwhelmed at the fact that I wasn't saving because I was so caught up in having fun and living in the moment, which is great, but I needed to make the decision to make sure that some of my paycheck was not coming to me, that it was going directly for future me. Now, I've looked at all of my credit cards and yes, in total, I owe over $14,000, actually just shy of $15,000. I have divided them up into what I can pay per month because if I paid all of my credit card debt, like every payment that's due on my cards, I would be in a financial hole. So one of my cards I owe, I took out three cards with one bank, so I need to call that bank and figure out a way to not, because they want me to pay a massive amount of money in January because I've missed payments several months in a row. So number one goal in January is to negotiate with my credit card companies to have a reasonable payment that does not put me in a financial, uh, in a financial bad spot. My number two goal is I have negotiated with some credit card companies through a um, debt consolidation. It's not where I stopped paying and then they consolidated debt. It's I forget the name. It's like a credit counseling group, American Credit Counseling, and they've consolidated six of my cards into one monthly payment and they reduce the interest on those six cards. So that I'm going to continue to pay that. $5,000 of my credit card debt will be paid by March 1st, 2027. So that's six cards, $5,000 worth of debt. I'm very, very excited about and I am going to continue to pay that monthly payment and with those lower interest rates and then I can focus on my cards that were not able to be, they, they did not negotiate with the debt uh, counseling group and I'm going to focus on paying those cards off first because they have higher interest rates than the cards that worked with the debt counseling program. I hope that all makes sense. If you have questions about that, I don't mind talking a little bit more about that in the comments or in a follow-up video, 
but it's just it's a it's a lot of numbers <laughs> so i wrote down the cards that i want to focus on paying for quarter one and these are the cards that are not in the debt constellation group consolidation debt counseling group so card number one is a capital one card and i owe 296 dollars on that card i want to divide that number by three and then pay each month january february and march on that card so i'll have that card paid by march so i want to at least pay that card off in march card number two is very similar i owe 448 dollars on it it is not part of the debt counseling program so i want to divide that number into four and then have that paid off by april so those two payments are going to be a bit of it's it's important that i budget for those payments if it means that i don't go to the movies or don't buy new clothes or have get my nails done less frequently it is very important to get those two cards paid off because Right now, I haven't paid off any cards in months, years even, and it is overwhelming when you haven't paid cards off in years to think, will I ever have this debt paid off? So this is the first step, is having two cards paid off by May at the very latest, and I'll keep you updated on my financial wellness with that and if I've accomplished those goals, but I'm very excited. I'm just gonna share my quarter one and part of quarter two goals because sharing all of my financial goals at once is overwhelming and I might make goals that are not feasible. Whereas if I make goals concerning credit card debt one quarter at a time, it is much more feasible for me to accomplish than saying, oh, I'm gonna pay $15,000 because I'm not gonna pay $15,000 off by the end of the year. One of my hopes is that I continue to grow on YouTube and I'm able to use AdSense to pay off credit card debt um, because if, it's really hard to pay everything in my life with just my paycheck. Uh, it's so hard to admit, but it's so true. I have used AdSense to fill in financial holes since June when I've been monetized on YouTube. Should I have not done that? Maybe I should have looked at my budget closer in August and September and fixed problems that became an issue in December uh, and November when I didn't have as much money via AdSense as I did this summer. I probably should have, but I didn't. And so I, I have, I'm either going to have to work harder on YouTube or other social media platforms to earn income, or I'm going to have to cut things in my budget. And I've, I've cut so much, I can't figure out what else to cut. But I have made several plans to cut. I'm not going to be paying for different memberships I've cut my subscriptions like by 60% for January. And I'm excited about that. Some of the things I'm gonna miss, I'm going to miss my Disney annual pass membership. I'm going to miss Netflix and HBO and Hulu, but it's so important to me to go into my thirties with a plan to be financially whole and healthy that it's okay for me to cut those things now because if I don't cut them now, it's going to be really bad <laughs> later on. And then I, I might, and I might have months later in the year where I don't make as much money on AdSense and through brand partnerships. And I need to not be spending money on things that are unnecessary. All right, that is all I'm gonna talk about in this video. It was quick and dirty, just a financial confessions. And I, maybe I'll start a financial confession series because that might be the best way to approach this. And I'm going to talk about January's budget mid-January I think because right now it's really overwhelming because I I'm just really overwhelmed one of my I'm it's really hard right now um I feel like I'm constantly living paycheck to paycheck and figuring out and then not having money to spend on things that I enjoy or need and that is very difficult right now I am ending the year I have a paycheck that comes like right at the beginning of January and once I pay my rent, I feel like I can sit down and think about the rest of the month. But until I pay my rent, nothing else matters, if that makes sense. So I can't think about my January budget until my rent is paid. My rent is way too much money for me right now. I've looked at trying to move to a cheaper apartment. My lease isn't up till June and apartments that would work for me are not less expensive. So fingers crossed, I can find a less expensive housing alternative for 20, mid 2024. That is a financial goal of mine. I guess that I haven't talked about is finding a less expensive apartment. That is a huge 
once I do that, if I could cut my rent in half, because I'm paying so much money in rent, if I could cut my rent in half, then I would have so much more flexibility to pay on debt and other financial liabilities. But that is just this quick and dirty, as I said, quick and dirty financial confession because I just needed to get it off my chest and talk about it. And if I didn't talk about it now, I would never talk about it because it's so embarrassing. But here we are, here goes. And I hope you, <laughs> here we go. Um, let me know if you're in a similar financial journey and if you're approaching a season of life where you realize you need to get your life in order because you don't wanna be dealing with this the rest of your life. That is me right now. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you stick around for more. I am so excited because I'm gonna be talking about my favorite reads of 2023 in my next video and some of the worst reads. I try to pair them together. So the worst and the best books of 2023. And that is much, much more fun to chat about than talking about financial problems. Anyway, thanks for watching. Love to see y'all in the comments and in other parts of my channel, like in my community tab on Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to my weekly newsletter, I've sent it out the last two weeks and I plan to keep sending it out. So I'll drop the link below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all around. See ya. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service.